Well, good morning everyone. It's Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. I'm sat in front of a green bush, which I'm going to use for some propagation material. So, if I turn the camera around, I'll uh, talk you through as to what the plant is and hopefully go through as to how to take some cuttings from it. Right, so first thing to say is we are 3rd of August. Um, you can see the sun is out, excuse the mess of the garden, sun is out, it's already 22 degrees, so it's going to be another hot day, it's been very hot down here, but the fact we're in August means that we're talking a different type of cutting to normal, so we're uh, talking semi-hard wood cuttings. So certain plants you can take those from, and this plant is one of them, or this group of plants. So probably a lot of you are familiar with this leaf, which is for Magnolia stellata. And this one is another Magnolia, but it's an evergreen Magnolia. So this is a Grandiflora type, but unlike most grandifloras get that get absolutely massive this variety is called k Paris, which is a more dwarfing variety and as you can see develops that sort of almost um, goblet upright habit to it as opposed to a big rounded tree and it has already been in flower but it's trying to make some more flower and I'll, uh, I'll find a picture for you and put a link on or put a picture on so that you can see what the flower looks like. So yeah, I've got this as a evergreen or what will be an evergreen backdrop to uh, screen out some of that uh, shed. So, Those are a couple of cuttings that I took approximately a fortnight ago. Um, just from these lower sections here, as I try and uh, lift the crown a little bit and clear it and reshape. But I want to take a few more cuttings, so whilst it's a little bit cooler, and so I uh, thought it was a good opportunity to, to show you. Right, so before we take the cuttings, we need to work out what the difference is between the types of wood. Um, so, these very pliable pieces here, that'd be your softwood. These green, or the brown sections, are your hardwood. And so we've got this intermediate stage here, that is classed as semi-ripe, semi-softwood. So it's not, it's still pliable, but not as pliable as that. And that's the material we'll be using at this time of year. So let's select some pieces and um, work out uh, how to do it. So if I just pop the camera down, I'll take some uh, cutting material and then we'll have a look. Okay, so got this section and you can see it's a bit of a mixture. So we'll start by dividing it up. Look for pieces that haven't got a flower bud to them. And obviously we don't want to use that. I'll cut too high up there. And that's just about ripe enough. So cut below your leaf joint, take off your bottom couple, and at this time of year where you're going to be losing a lot of moisture through uh, heat, heat loss, that's what you end up with. So something around about four to six inches in length. We just pop that into some rooting compound, like so. And 
here's the here's the easy bit. So we just pop it into the soil. Ah, looks like a little uh, baby bird's come to join us. So this bit here, because it's a shady spot, and I tend to do quite a few cuttings in here. So just pop it into the ground there, firm it back around, and that is one cutting done. So let's show you again. So we can either do it from there and try and get a piece out, but I think I'd rather take it there, pick off these ones. So it might look a bit ruthless, like you're losing so much, but the plant will be fine. Mm, take one more off, like so. So you can see, that's the pliable bit, the softwood. That's just semi, semi ripe. Hormone rooting compound. And again, just pop it in the ground. Firm it around. Oh. And that is it done. Now I won't lie and say they'll be rooted very quickly. They won't. It will probably take you until next spring for them to produce a root and a viable plant. So a lot of patience on a, a semi-ripe cutting or even hardwood cuttings later in the season. And that is it, basically. It's a bit of a, a waiting game. Main thing to make sure is that the cuttings don't dry out. So that's why I just, you know, I use them in the ground or strike them, put them into the ground. It is a fairly free drain, draining clay soil. And as you can see, that bit behind me is a shady spot. So uh, they're not going to get cooked and the cuttings in a soil substrate will do far much better than um, in a peat or a pot. Just seeing if the bird is back, but yeah um yeah if you've got access to planting or doing your cuttings into garden or a loam material go with that say peat or a peat substitute very difficult to get them to root without um well proper facilities and uh hopefully some of you have read my blog um, or my details and know my background is in horticulture and plant propagation and things so uh yeah i'd like to know i'd like to think that i know what i'm talking about but um anyway that's the video if you've got any questions just send them over to me always do my best to answer them for you if you like what i'm doing then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on the future videos i'm doing but uh, above all else, just enjoy your gardening, enjoy your experimenting and relaxing and making the most of this lovely weather whilst it lasts. And yeah, if you can get a glimpse of a bit of wildlife behind you, no, it's not plain ball, then uh, do that as well. But uh, yeah, till next time, my there you go. Bye for now.